I'd like to talk today about something we've been uh, working on internally for the past three or four months. Um, sadly, it's not quite done yet. I was hoping to have a nice demo at the end, but I can at least talk about what we have so far, which is a uh, debug server for uh, nicely debugging on deeply embedded targets. Um, as a brief bit of background, for those that um, don't know how GDV's remote target system works, uh, it's a text protocol that uh, messages are sent back and forth between GDB and a server that talks this protocol. So in the example here, for instance, when you connect to a target, GDB will ask the server for a bunch of registers, and, and the server will return back the contents of every register that it knows about. And there's a rough mapping between most things a user will want to do. So for example here, if a user asks to print the variable foo, and it's at address 124, GDB will ask a target, give me the contents of this address, uh, and then that will be returned and presented to the user. Now, GDB has a GDB server in tree called, unsurprisingly, GDB server, which is good for debugging programs on a like, large machine with an operating system. Uh, but for deeply embedded targets where you may only have like 12 kilobytes of memory, trying to run a server on there directly might not be uh, feasible or um, where you're doing early target bring up, you might want to debug hardware uh, itself because all you're running is tiny programs on like a non-hosted environment. Um, so uh, this GDB server we've been writing, it's originally based on a uh, server that uh, Jeremy Bennett, who's just walked into the room, has been wrote about 12 years ago, something like that. And we've used it for many projects internally. And over time, it's been forked and different features have been added. And it's just about the right time frame to merge all these forks back together and do a clean, um, like, fixing up things. So roughly speaking, our server, if I like, slide this diagram along, uh, we have a all a target need all, all someone needs to implement if they wish to debug something is a Singapore class which abstracts most of the things that we want to uh, do. And roughly speaking, for some of the simple things, it's about one function per call per RSP packet. So there's something to read a register, something to write a register, and Write, read memory, write memory, and a few things that for deeply embedded targets is usually quite useful, like just being able to abstract out generally uh, what the, the number of cycles or instructions that have been executed so that you can do nice benchmarking. Um, and the nice um, feature we get out of uh, designing a server this way is that we can... Um, we, uh, someone who is porting this for their hardware doesn't have to care about RSP works. Um, all they need to worry about is when we ask for give us the contents of memory, just tell us if you can, if this address exists and you have permission to read it, what is in this place. And then the server itself just handles all the RSP things. Now, I want to talk about two things that we've been working on that fall out of this design. Um, the first of these is, uh, is a lockstep debug target. So this is useful for very early hardware bring up, uh, even, uh, more realistically in the territory where you don't have hardware yet and all you have is something like a simulation of your um, Verilog or something like that, if you're implementing a hardware, and a simulator that you know implements the hardware correctly. Now, because all that was needed is to implement this one class, we've, we've implemented this implementation, which just allows you to glue two implementations into it, and everything that is asked for is compared to check that they remain in sync. So if you go to run a program and, and say, okay, execute up to this breakpoint, uh, you will either get 
a response back saying, I hit this break point, which means everything's fine, or I stepped four instructions in because uh, one, the registers in one machine deviated in value to the registers in another machine. Now, either this means you have a test that is non-deterministic, or possibly you have a bug in your hardware and you should go and look at that. And this is really useful, and we have seen this actually um, allow one of our customers to find and solve bugs in their hardware before they ever actually taped it out, which solving things while they're still software is a lot cheaper than once you've actually made physical hardware. Um, the second thing that we're, the, we're, that we're working on is uh, instead of splitting out on this side of the, R, of the server, is splitting out on the other side so that you can debug more complex systems that have different architectures in different parts of a system. So say you have one, um, so you have one system on a chip and you have some RISC-V cores and you have some ARM cores. Now GDB can only talk through, talk to one architecture at a single time, but with our server, the plan is that if a target tells the server, oh, I'm actually two things at once, it will expose two parallel um, target interfaces, which you can connect two different GDBs to, and then do things like set one core going, uh, set a breakpoint on the other one, and if a breakpoint is hit, both stop. Um, as I say, I'd like, I wish I had a demo of this, but it's still a bit of work in progress, and I have apparently gone really quickly in this, so I am, I'm, I'm done. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> um, over in our team, uh, we prototyped at one point uh, a GDB server variant, which could do this kind of splitting, not with the multi-arch um, problem in mind, but with the idea of having two people sitting at two different debuggers or debugger-like tools that have to multiplex control over a single target process. Mm -hmm. Um, is, it looks like this is really close to what you're doing too. It's not conceptually that different. Is that something that you'd be considering doing? Um, possibly once we've, like, mo the, the most of the work needs to be done is mostly in making sure that the right messages go to the right GDB. Um, but once we have that sorted, that seems like something that should be possible. Okay. It's an interesting, uh, twist. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs>